we can uh, the patients keep coming in between so you can't I hear think one of one of the hint i want to give you the hospital in mumbai they are so full all the group of my my colleagues and all these we are only worried if you get it and if you need admission then do you we hope get a place this why the we are running the hospital where i'm attached there are covid hospital three no hospitals places. there are covid ah. hospital but 11 hour that hour you may not get the place so we are worried about that more than anything else being the part of the covid team being the part of the hospital but still the hospitals are so much full that we are really worried about it yeah, i think yeah. same thing will happen with the other places also yeah 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 no doctor supply it happened in yeah. our hospital uh -huh. our own consultant yeah uh, fell ill and yeah. since all the beds are full mm -hmm. we couldn't give him a bed uh, then then they see your own consultant own hospital uh, see, that is that is the thing we are worried no and Suppose, being a corporate yeah. hospital the management doesn't seem to care yeah the i agree with you. this is the whole problem this is the problem with corporate hospitals yeah yes yeah. ceo ceo they call what they call it yeah, yeah they, 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 they 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 manage it here the same thing what you are saying we are in one of the hospital ceo all admissions are through ceo yeah. not through consultant my hospital ceo is half my age usko kheech ke thappad marne ka lagta hai he is come from some management school and he is sitting and calling the shots what does he know about the commitment of doctors that's right, that's right that's right i think still two minutes more then i i think R ravi won't have that problem because you know ravi has got 100 bedded hospital of his own Dr. Pandwarzan, are you aware of that? What, what, what no, I didn't know. I didn't Ravi know. has got 100 bedded hospital of his own. Oh my God. So, uh, in which okay. city, Dr. Ravi? Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Uh, sir, it's 5 o'clock. So yeah. Yeah. just wait for the 10 seconds, 10 15 seconds. I will make it you live. Okay. Okay. Uh, Salinda, sir, are you ready? Uh, who is uh, who is going to start on behalf of FDC? Uh, sir, I'll start. And then give it to me. Okay. Yes, and yes, I'll, yes. I'll introduce my colleagues. Salinda, sir, are you ready? One second. Okay, you tell me, then I will take a 15 seconds. Who's Prashant Upadhyay? Uh, sir, I am the technical person. Oh, okay. Okay. Ravi Rathod also is here. Good. Welcome. Dr. Ravi here. Dr. Ravi. Uh, ah, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, 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 everyone. Namaskar. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. 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 So nice to see you, all of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Salinda, sir, you are live. Yes. Uh, good evening, doctors. Uh, uh, welcome you all to the live webinar on uh, treating dermatophytosis infection in today's scenario. Uh, we have an uh, eminent uh, dermatologist from uh, all over India who is going to uh, share their experience, uh, their uh, treating strategies with all of you, uh, that how they are treating dermatophytosis infection in today's scenario. Uh, I'll introduce uh, the moderator for the presentation, Dr. Narendra Patwardhan. Uh, he's a senior uh, consultant dermatologist from Pune. He's ex-president IADVL and ex-president IADVL Maharashtra State. So uh, without taking much of the time of everyone, I'll request uh, Dr. Padwadan to uh, take up the following, sir. Sir, Thank over you. to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, all my delegates, welcome. Good evening to everyone. On behalf of all my panelist friends, I welcome to this seminar on antifungal drugs. We will, in this one one and a half hour, discuss all the probabilities, all the all the problems which we face in our practice uh, 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 of while treating the fungal infections. You.
you all know that for last seven to eight, we have been facing this minans. This has spoiled the quality of life, increased the financial burden on the families. The fungus has become notorious. About 10 years back when it was going to respond, it was responding to a simple drug like visofulvin and local myconazole, flutanazole. Now it is no more responding to that. There are lots of issues in this fungal infections and uh, we will be discussing in this one and a half uh, hour. Uh, I would like to introduce my panelists. Uh, we have Dr. Saple from Mumbai, Dr. Murlidhar Rajgopalan, then we have Dr. V. Ravi from Kakinada and we have Dr. Ravi Rato. All eminent dermatologists, well-known figures in uh, uh, the field of dermatology. And without uh, wasting any time, we will start the ball rolling. Uh, can I have the first slide, please? Okay, please mute everyone. Next one. Uh, I will be asking questions to a particular person, but if you would like to answer in a different way, anyone can, after that we can answer. Have you, friends, have you noticed any change in tinea patients, age-wise, distribution-wise, and morphology-wise? I will ask this question to Dr. Sapley. Yeah, uh... Dr. Pradhan, these are good questions because when you talk about this age-wise, distribution-wise, what we are facing in the last seven, eight years, we are seeing what we call is the atypical presentation, extensive tinea, we are getting it, a recurrence, a relapse, and even, uh, even the patient, the lesion uh, uh, resolve, the itching persists, pigmentations, and now coming to hardly used to see in pediatric practice. But now we are seeing a lot of cases in the pediatric practice. And of course, in adult, as I said, these are the atypical presentations we are seeing, unusual sites, unusual types of uh, fungal infection. And of course, there are many causes. All right. But these are okay. the presentations we All are right. seeing in our practice. All right. Dr. Murli, what is your opinion about this change in the I totally uh, second what Dr. Sapli said that we are seeing uh, more uh, extensive disease and more uh, disease in ch children and a very uh, uh, unusual patterns. I'll just focus only on the pattern so that responses yeah, yeah. are crisp. Yeah. Uh, I found that, you know, earlier we used to keep the, talking about a plaque like a ringworm with a expanding border. Uh, now I find there are lesions which look very much like prurego. And many of these patients are being treated with steroids because the dermatologist may not do a KOH examination for something which clinically looks like prurigo. It looks just like an eczema, but actually turns out to be a fungus. And uh, that is an important point which I thought I should uh, highlight. That's right. That's right. Uh, Dr. Ravi, you would like to show some slides? Yeah. I'm just showing some of these slides, just as what Dr. Murlidhar Rajgopal and told. Can you show the previous slide? Ex yeah, extensive oh, blocks on the face, yeah, yeah. and it's more like the one dermatitis or something. That's right. And the one on the back, you, you are able to see. And the one before, in a child whom I very recently saw, just on 11th of June, extensive uh, block and a, a very intensive erythema on the abdomen of just a one and a half year old child. This is the kind of changes in elderly, in children, extensive facial lesions. So the morphology, the distribution, everything has changed. And uh, during the course of the discussion, we'll uh, uh, dwell more upon these things. Just suffice to say that the morphology is showing a lot of difference. I'm sure a lot of the viewers will agree with us that this is the crux of the issue, what we need to tackle. Thank you. Yeah. So what I feel that the age pattern has changed. Yes, the age group as uh, four years of age. The morphology has changed. There are the double rings which we are seeing in the patients. The most of the lesions, few of the lesions look like eczematous patches. Few lesions may look like uh, uh, psoriasis as you have 
uh, shown in this picture. So the morphology has changed, the age pattern has changed, and everything has changed. And what could be the change in the fungus? We were seeing Trichophyta nerubrum. Dr. Ravi Rathod, what yeah. could be the fungus which has... The type of fungus you mean, sir? Yes, yes, yes. So, till recently, we were all aware of the Trichophyta nerubrum, uh, yeah. which is the yeah. one which is responsible for chronic dermatophytosis. Right. But there is a shift or change in, in some of the centers are isolating more of trichophytal mentagrophytes. That's right. Uh, that, that's a change in the, the shift from uh, regular trichophytal rubrum infection, which we used to see. And in, I just want to add a few more things which my colleagues have told. I have seen patients as young as three to six months of age having oh. infection. That too, uh, in NRI, we had come from Canada. And, uh, and, and so unfortunately, th there they couldn't uh, make a clinical diagnosis. They had just taken a, a, a sample for culture. And the patient had come to me. And with the clinical suspicion, I had put on antifungals. And the child responded very well. And they got the result after some time back, uh, after two or three weeks, about the culture report from Canada. So okay. that to say it is a global problem now. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we'll go to the second question. Can you share the second uh, question? I think Dr. Patwardhan. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, Ravi said, I agree with him. But they as a trichopatum problem. But there is one paper from Calcutta of Dr. Day. Mm -hmm. He said, of course, there yeah. are various papers from the various findings epidemiologically. But mm -hmm. he said trichopatum verucosum. Yes. Is almost sixty percent in their finding. Okay. 60% and one of the mycologists I had a talk, uh -huh. they said, sir, now zoonotic species uh -huh. are be becoming uh, anthropophilic. Okay. The, uh, the, uh, the trico, uh, trico, uh, tri uh, this uh, microporum canis, uh, that, that's why they're talking now. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's very good. Thank you very much. We go to the second questions. Uh, uh, can I just add a little you, bit here? Uh, yes, 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 please. Sorry. Yeah, on yeah. the screen, I have just shared our lab data. Over uh -huh. the last three and a half years, we have this 1668 cultures where reports are available. Okay. Can, you can you share the... Can my own, share my own hospital screen? laboratory, we have a full-fledged microbiology department. We do KOH regularly and also culture where indicated, where they, I'm finding some tough questions. So, trichophyte and mentagrophytes has occupied more than 50% out of 1668. Okay. 850 cultures have come as trichophyte and mentagrophytes. Mm -hmm. But I invite the attention to column six and uh, five and six, Aspergillus and Pencilium species. But when you give me a little time later on, I'll show some of the clinical and microbiological correlation here. These two are accounting for 100 cases out of this, uh, close to 8% of the cases. So. Okay. There are several species, and we need to really put our heads together with the microbiologists and dwell upon this. Those seemingly resistant cases and others, the species may hold the key for us. That's all what I want to uh, tell through this slide. That's right. But uh, did you see the slide? I couldn't see the slide just now. Uh, uh, we couldn't see. We can see a slide. Okay. All right. Okay. Fine. 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 Uh, right. My slide is on the share with the table. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we go to the second question. Uh, for the panelist, what are the variables in the history, examination, and investigations that decide how you will treat the case of tinea? That I can address this question to Dr. Murli there. Variables in the history, examination, uh, and investigations. Uh, ultimately, uh, you know, the history tells us whether this is a fresh case of tinea. Is it a recurring case? Because you know most of us are tertiary care dermatologists. Yes, so the history itself will tell us whether it is a primary case, a naive patient, untreated patient. If he has been treated, what are the kind of treatments he has taken? Because if the patient has been exposed to combination drugs, then uh, we can expect a uh, slightly uh, more prolonged uh, duration of time for response. Uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, uh, history, also the activity status of the patient, what are their personal hygiene habits, what kind of clothes they wear, all this is important for us. So we really need to spend time now 
because uh, we can say that uh, dermatophyte infections has indeed become a big epidemic in India, and so we need to spend time on the history. As far as examination is concerned, the extent is very important, and many a time, it is uh, we we may, we may miss areas where fungus is present. So uh, it is not enough to just uh, look at one site and say that okay, fungus is there. You are going to have to see the entire body, and uh, then say yes, this is the extent because the classification of uh, the fungal infections is going to change because, for example, you can have trichophyton rubrum syndrome where yeah. four to five different sites are involved at the same time, which is where the management will change if you're going yes. to look only at the groins. Yeah. And uh, investigation wise, I don't think we need anything more than a KOH. <coughs> uh, but of course, if we have any suspicion that the patient uh, has a protracted course or has uh, gone into for drug resistance or has gone into relapse or is not responding to therapy, then you might have to look for uh, any evidence of systemic immune suppression, like what happens in diabetes, any other drugs. And, you know, uh, since we are going to start them on mm -hmm. medications, which can have potential serious drug interactions, you also <laughs> need to get a very good history of what are the other drugs that the patient is going to get. And if you are trying to think of azoles in these patients, uh, most times I find that off late, whereas earlier two weeks of an azole was enough. Nowadays, two weeks of an, of an azole is just not enough to enough. treat a fungal infection. That's so right. a baseline LFT is, I think, important when you look for investigations with relation to the drug per se. All right. Uh, uh, Dr. Ravi told, do you do... do KOH preparation in all the patients or you have some criteria for doing KOH and subsequently the culture. Which are the patients whom you go for KOH and then culture? KOH as a routine, we are not doing such. It is only when we suspect that uh, if it doesn't classically fit into any fungal and dermatophytic infection. That's right. Or especially like in tinea incognito or where the morphology is altered. Okay. Or we're totally atypically looking. That's, we that's get a KOH done. And um, as far as the culture is concerned, culture uh, we rarely get it done. I feel it's more of academic interest because it takes two to three weeks at least. And uh, by the time uh, we cannot keep on waiting for the culture report to come. So generally KOH we do quite often, but yeah. more so in patients where we have some amount of suspicion of other diagnosis as well. All right. Okay. Dr. Dr. Murli? Dr. Murli? Uh, yeah, one minute. One minute. Uh, let Murli answer then. Uh, Dr. So I, I, I broadly agree with what Dr. Ravi Rathod said, but uh, I would just like to say that uh, there is a method called as the Malditoff available. And uh, sometimes Malditoff is required when you are suspecting fungal drug resistance. But the unfortunate thing is there are only about three centers in India which do it. We are doing it. So once in a while, we just uh, do the Malditoff assay also. So that is as far as the culture sensitivity part is concerned. KOH, yes, in most cases, I agree with what Dr. Ravi said. We don't need to do it in all patients, but I think in due course of time in the future, it will be good if we make it a standard of practice. All right. Uh, Dr. Saple? Yeah, uh, the Murli has made it very clear. See, the KOH preparation is so simple. It should be our clinical practice in our clinic. What you require is a five minutes or your assistant, somebody can keep the scraping after 10, 15, we can do, but in another, so I entirely agree with that point. But about the history, one of the point I would like to add, the compliance of the patient, that is very important because patient go from one doctor to another doctor. So in history, apart from whatever Burle has said, all points I entirely agree, but one of the points we have to add, the history, how the patient has taken, how whether they had adhered the treatment, whether there's compliance, that is about the history. In examination, we get two types of patients. One patient who are in a immunocompromised patient and others who are applied a lot of steroid. I think most of our patients, they apply steroid and come. When they come with application of steroid, lesions are always 
the lesions are raised, they are extensive, while in immunocompromised patients like in HIV, I have seen maximum number in HIV and diabetic, usually those lesions are not that vivid or conspicuous. The border is also diffused, not lined by those papules. So that is in the history, and of course, the culture and KOH, but I, 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 I have KOH preparation, we do it in our clinic every day. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ravi, would like to add anything in this? Yeah. I mean, about the culture, uh, the important thing, what I found is that, but for the number of cultures I'm doing, I would not have chanced upon these alternate organisms which are uh, accounting for it. And of course, Malditoff, I agree with Dr. Murlidhar when he said Malditoff is, it's a state-of-the-art procedure and uh, very few centers have it. I'm probably in due course of time, I'm going to have one in my own hospital. But you know, this is uh, affordability also is a factor. But today when we are empirically starting a patient on anti oral antifungal of our choice, at the same time, by the time he comes for a review, we are very likely to have the culture report within the third and fourth weeks. So then if there is something that is there, we can always uh, make an alteration of our treatment schedule. All right, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we come to the third question. Now suppose we have a classical case of tinea cruris involving the groins and few lesions on the gluteus. He has not taken any treatment. He is an adult. And what is your drug of choice and uh, the oral drug of choice, antifungal and the local drug of choice? I can start with again, Dr. Ravi Rathod. Yes, sir. This, uh, I feel uh, Azul's are the drugs preferably now I generally start with itraconazole. Okay. Itraconazole and uh, I uh, alcohol is the topical preparation which I generally prefer when I give uh, orally itraconazole. So that's the first line of treatment generally. Earlier I used to give fluconazole. Okay. Terminaphine because of uh, increased yeah. resistance or re relapse is quite often. I still stick on to hydroconazole. But you give azole orally and azole locally or you prefer the other group of drugs, uh, of a local medication? Locally, sometimes I try allylamine also. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so that the different mechanism of action. That's right. Well, That's right. Yeah. But uh, I have seen uh, if you give top, uh, orally and topically, the same as the effects remain same. The only problem is the relapse or recurrence. Recur yes, uh, this is a very important question. So I'll ask this to all the panelists. I can go to Dr. Saple. What yeah, is your but, drug of choice? For, uh, for last three years, my drug of choice is fluconazole, 150 milligram daily for minimum six weeks, can be eight weeks. Some cases, even few cases up to three months. Of course, when the patient is immunocompromised, even longer than that. So the fluconazole, the reason being, last about five years I'm studying fluconazole. Fluconazole is not mentioned anywhere in the book. I and mean, what is the dose they have mentioned is once in a week. Once in a week is okay concentration for candida, but not for dermatophytosis. What we require dermatophytosis is the daily doses because of fluconazole, get concentrated in the stratum corneum within two to three hours, but lasts only for a maximum 30 hours. So the dose has to be repeated every 30 hours, that is every day. So many probably dermatologists are using once in a week, twice in a week, they are not getting the report. That is one of the reasons. Second, second reason is the elderly patient, drug, drug, Interaction, drug drug interactions are minimum with fluconazole because many, many dermatologists thought this itraconazole, fluconazole, they're azole. But you know, their metabolism is different. Itraconazole metabolism, the liver CYP450, while fluconazole is one of the very safe drugs. Thirdly, is a very cheap drug compared to itraconazole. Fourthly, there is a uh, there is a study done by Kabir Sardana from Delhi that if terbinafine or itraconazole fail, fluconazole work, but it has to be daily dose of 150 milligram. Convenient to take. This is, there are many advantages, but then we started preparing 
and we are very happy no recurrence and no relapse but right. what is important in our practice is the counseling counseling and counseling all right uh, dr mudlidhar i would like to ask you a drug of choice uh, whether it's uh, one drug or two drugs and the, the, that's this is a very important part we are discussing yes we actually published a paper called the ectoderm study the ectoderm study is the first guideline which appeared in the last 20 years on how to treat uh, uh, the the, uh, the dermatophyte infections of the skin now if the patient is non immunocompromised and has a single anatomical region involved we would go by only a topical drug like uh, sertraconazole or loliconazole we wouldn't go for a systemic drug okay but if the patient needs a systemic drug then we would prefer a drug like terbinafine or uh, uh, itraconazole having said this uh, of late there are reports of uh, drug resistance to terbinafine terbinafine, terbinafine right? no, there are reports of drug resistance to terbinafine but i would not tow the line which is being uh, Uh, postulated that this is the end of the road for terbinafine it is not the end of the road for terbinafine there are various combinations that we can use and as far as fluconazole is concerned uh, it was my go to drug for a very long time until itraconazole came and if you look at the mic of itraconazole versus uh, fluconazole itraconazole mic is much better than that of fluconazole mm -hmm. fluconazole is more of a fungi static drug and the doses of fluconazole that you need are much higher than what you're going to need for uh, itraconazole to get the same degree of effect so we need to consider all this and in patients who uh, for some reason especially due to drug interactions because both uh, itraconazole and fluconazole are going to affect the cytochrome p450 enzymes in patients who are going to need an azole but uh, they cannot take it for some reason we we'll, we still have griseofulvin which earlier was thought to be fungi static but today we know is more fungicidal all right the very good dr ravi what is your drug of choice yeah i i would go either for itraconazole or fluconazole as the first line of choice terbinafine is not my first line of choice but one thing what is missing in current literature and in all uh, current expert opinions is ketoconazole i am a great fan of ketoconazole i am aware of the first article that appeared in new england journal of medicine about 5 years ago linking ketoconazole to dermatophytosis in as far as fda approval is concerned as far as india is concerned it's not yet banned for that use it is very much in work for that and what I, in my experience of 33 years what i found is one single case of jaundice and one single case of fixed drug eruption to ketoconazole this is the only thing i uh, found and in 70 cases where i did a liver enzyme study pre and post ketoconazole 4 to 6 weeks therapy i didn't find any change at all in the uh, liver enzyme levels all right so oh, i find oh. ketoconazole to be a very valuable molecule and often times i'll be using ketoconazole orally also so of course typically i use any of the things available including myconazole and uh, uh, clotrimazole all right uh, uh, many many times fact, uh, people yeah please go ahead uh, in fact uh, just to add to what dr ravi said uh, ketoconazole is the drug of uh, fda approved drug for all these infections uh, uh, all the rest of the things i think they are most of the time off label ketoconazole is the fda approved for almost all dermatophytic infections this is just a point i wanted to add all right uh, some uh, sometimes we need to combine two groups of drugs some combine azole with griseofulvin and give a local medication some combine griseofulvin with the other drugs uh, dr murli what is, do you combine griseofulvin with other drugs and if yes in which situations i don't combine drugs on the first day of therapy mm -hmm. but if i find my patient is uh, showing recalcitrant uh, dermatophytosis or has already been on Well, some of the systemic drugs before he comes to me and still has uh, the, the the dermatophytosis and after about two weeks he has shown no response to the primary drug. Then I don't mind combining griseofulvin with even an azole. Uh, you can even combine terbinafine with an azole. Okay. 
All right. Uh, Dr. Saple, what is your second line of drug? Suppose uh, your... I think, Dr. Patwardhan, I would like to add to the previous question. Please go ahead. The combination of the drugs. See, there are mm -hmm. there are a lot of recommendation where they can combine, and according to whatever science, you can combine all drugs. Fluconazole or terbinafine can be combined. All drugs can be combined. But about three years before, because when you combine drugs, the toxicity increases, the cost goes uh, goes up, it affects your adherence, the to a lot of problems are there. So we, we about three years before, or no, four years before, we did a study with itraconazole 100 milligram BID, where almost 40% of the patients have taken multiple systemic antifungal. And those patients who have failed even on itraconazole, we included. We followed good adherence and the compliance, and the patient showed all the response. So since then, we, we in our practice, we find the combination treatment is not needed. If your compliance and adherence is good, that is our one of the experience. Uh, what is the next question? No, I was asking about, no, but Murli wants to answer something. Please go ahead. No, I, the very brief point, I agree with Dr. Saple that this combination of drugs is very rarely done. And I must say that this, I answered the question because it was put to me and it is out there in the literature about these combinations. But even in practice, rarely do we have to use the combination. Yes, if compliance yes, yes, yes. and uh, general hygiene measures and preventive measures are followed properly. Yes, correct. Entirely agree, agree. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ravi Rathod, what percentage of your patients need this two two or more type of drugs and uh, uh, under what circumstances? So generally, I stick on to single drug. Okay. What I find is the patients do respond. It is not that the patient are not, not responding. Either they are taking itraconazole or fluconazole or terbinafine. The problem most of the time is the relapse or recurrence. Okay. Uh, and uh, 90 to 95% of the patient respond to single drug. And uh, the, if it is given adequate, adequate dose and for adequate period of time. One okay. thing is, as Muralidhar sir said, it is the hygiene. It's the hygiene which matters most. It's uh, excessive hyperhidrosis or um, maceration of the skin, which are predisposing to recurrence of infection. Unless those things are taken care of, I think uh, we will uh, actually losing the battle here. Because those things are the one which has to be addressed properly. And I rarely combine the drug, but when the situation arises, griseofulvin, I prefer over other drugs. All right. Now, I since we are, we are talking about hygiene, what are the exact uh, exact instructions you give it to the patient and the family members? Let it be very... I yes, mean, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, the first, first and foremost, uh, practically what I ask them to do is to get all their uh, clothes uh, uh, or the towels or other, other bed sheets, everything, washed in a hot water, boiling water, not just hot water. Huh? Boiling water, sun dry it and get them pressed. And keep the room dry, tidy, and sunlight should fall in properly. And they have to take bath twice a day. And the, they have to change their garments, both inner garments and outer garments, every time they do it. And what I have found it, most of the time, those people who stick on to these guidelines, they generally don't come back with recurrence. All right, okay. Uh, yes, Murli. Only one additional thing I would say is that we need to emphasize to the patient that the underclothes should also be ironed. Especially yeah, yes, that's right. the, yes, sir, that's also the, point. That's right. uh, yeah, very that important. also I tell. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, I tell my patients very clearly that the only <laughs> uh, microorganism or the only living thing that has survived all the four yugas of the world are fungus. Fungus. fungal <laughs> spores have survived for 40 million years, years. Yes. and the only yes. thing which kills a fungal spore is going to be dry heat yes. not moist yes. heat yes so that's right. we have that's to right. you know when mm -hmm. we counsel our patients i found that to be a very useful way of counseling them that the dry heat when you iron the underclothes and the second thing we have to tell our patients is that you may be free of the fungus but as far as the towels are concerned the towels can carry the fungus for six months after your cure. Yeah. And uh, some of the sheets can carry the fungus for six to eight weeks after you appear to be clinically cured. 
that's mm. true. So, you know, these counseling tips are very important. Important. Yes. Dr. Ravi, you wanted to say something. No, one thing that really bugs me and switches me off is the Yati. review review patient oh. wearing the jean pants again. <laughs> <laughs> jeans, jeans, jeans. I tell him next time I see you in jeans, I'm going to cut off with a scissors here. I'll show my scissors there to him. <laughs> uh, cut off your jean pants into pieces. So I mean, he'll pay you, sir, for it. <laughs> no, this is the fashion. The problem with the jean pants uh, for yes. youngsters is that they need not iron it. What are all the measures our predecessors took? Okay. Sure. People can do away with all these things. Wear a jean pant endless for one month, two months, three months. It's so. Good. They have just put it on the hanger and again wear it after a gap of one week or 10 days, something like that. Okay. So this is, I think, one thing we should stress really to the youngsters. Yeah. Along with that, what I do is usually in our families, we wash the clothes together, uh, either in a bucket or in a washing machine. So I tell them to wash it separately, never to share the towel and never to share the soap also. Yeah. How much it is scientifically, I don't know, but that works because the patient really follow this. These are the simple instructions. Uh, doc yeah, yeah, Dr. Muri. A very, very small point. I don't know if it fits in over here, but you know, we also should counsel the patient about how to apply the uh, antifungal. And I tell them to apply it for about one to one and a half centimeters outside Beyond the, the yeah. uh, margin, margin of the patch. That's Dr. Saple? Yeah, you know, I have uh, apart from this, any patient comes, I, I, I think we should give the printed form to the patient. We should sp spend some time with the patient. What is the first thing? We, we just write, the patient must take treatment for six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks is the first thing. Secondly, all family members should be treated at the same time if they are affected. That is very important time. Thirdly, um, uh, most of the power, uh, points are covered, but no use of steroid. We just write in the red pain, no use of any steroid ointment. So all these instructions, we, uh, we have a printed instruction. So each and every patient get that printed form. Uh, all patients should be treated at the same time. Treatment should be six to eight weeks of uh, the washing of clothes, ironing, and no steroid preparation. I think this is the instruction usually we give in our clinic. Yes, Dr. Murli. Uh, are you going to take up steroid uh, a little later or can you make yeah. a very small point? Yeah, yeah, we can. Since we are here, we can discuss it just now. Not a problem. Uh, actually, what Dr. Sapte said is 100% right. And uh, steroid uh, misuse is the reason why this one of the one of the reasons. I won't say it is the only reason. One of the reasons why fungus is expanding so much. Yes, yes. But uh, it's very interesting to know that uh, even 20 to 30 years ago, people were using topical steroids in the first five to six days of treatment. Okay. And large, well-documented studies are there. It show that in inflammatory tenia and uh, dermatophytes, especially which are due to zoophilic fungi, there is such a severe inflammation, you will need a topical steroid in the first five to six days. Right. Unfortunately, what happened is people lost the track of what's happening and uh, they just gave it as a combination or uh, the counselling was not good enough. We have spent so much time on counselling, even in this small webinar, but the counselling was not good enough and people just kept using the steroid because once you suppress the inflammatory response, you don't see the fungus. Yeah. So we, we really need to put that steroid perspective properly. But as of today, we say, irrespective of the inflammation, don't use steroids. All right. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ravi Rathod, do you use our old uh, myconazole, clotrimazole, which I find as on today are the cheapest medicines available? Consider one family and you are writing the medication. So you have to think of the cost as a practicing doctor. Yes, sir. So do you use myconazole, clotrimazole? If yes, how sure. long? Combine it with the oral medication or no? I would like to know about this. Clotrimazole, generally I reserve it for candidial infections. Sir. Most of the time, candidial. But as far as this, uh, the uh, dermatophytic infections are concerned, I still stick on to sertoconazole or laliconazole. Uh, I have not tried extensively myconazole or clotrimazole in dermatophytic infections of late. All right. Okay. Uh, 
Dr. Rabi, do you use a local ketoconazole in any case? Yeah, go ahead. Local ketoconazole I use in pediatric uh, population bear because most of the times we cannot use uh, uh, other oral agents and all. So local ketoconazole I'll be reserving for mostly pediatric patients. Of course, ketoconazole shampoo I use where extensive tinea is there. Yeah. I believe that uh, good ketoconazole shampoo will help. Now, just going a little bit uh, backwards, but we were talking about the steroid abuse when uh, Murlidhar and uh, Sople have uh, enlarged on that. So apart from that, what I think is the way the people are using antibiotics left, right, and straight have should have totally changed the regular flora of the human body. That's why we are seeing extensive areas of involvement on the neck, at the scalp line, on the face, in all age groups. So previously, a pubic area, I never saw tinea corporis. Today, we are seeing tinea, pubic area also tinea corporis very much. So the changing human flora, I mean, uh, intelligent people like the people on this uh, forum, as well as those in the listeners group, we should do a systematic study on the change in the human flora all over the body so that we might find a uh, solution that there is a bacterial population has changed. Of course, culture, lifestyle, global warming, these four on the panel, what I have shown there, change in the fungal species, change of human flora, steroid abuse, and culture and lifestyle dress in global warming. These are the ones yeah. that are yeah. driving, that's what I feel. Yeah. And of course, topical agent, mostly you rightly observed, the liliconazole and other cetaconazole are very expensive creams. When there are more than one member in the family are involved, for cost factors, I use either micronazole or clotrimazole in such fair, fair cases. Okay. Where minimal involvement is there, of course, I go for liliconazole topical. All right. Dr. Yeah. Murli? I think there's some very important point was made. Uh, two issues I'm going to take up. One is your original question about myconazole. Yes, yes. I find myconazole to be particularly useful in tinea interdigitalis yeah. because myconazole has some degree of activity against coronary bacterium also. And in tinea interdigitalis, there is so much maceration that maceration is due to coronary bacterium rather than the fungus alone. So it's a very good drug to use in tinea interdigitalis. Nowadays, you don't get Castellani's paint and things like that. The second thing I want to just uh, emphasize is uh, 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 Dr. Jess brought out the issue about uh, the extensive use of antibiotics and how it has uh, uh, affected the fungal infections. Now, he also recommended that a study should be done. I want to br uh, bring out that these studies have been done already. And because of so much of antibiotic misuse, not just steroid misuse, uh, we are in a state of what we call as dysbiosis. In dysbiosis, the normal microflora of the skin changes. When that happens, the immune sentinels of the skin do not work anymore. And the most important immune sentinel of the skin, which does not work, is are the TH17 cells. So dysbiosis actually okay. suppresses the TH17 cells. So okay. definitely unwarranted antibiotic therapy is something which we should avoid for more reasons than one. Okay. Okay. I, actually, I'm very happy that you came out with uh, Castellini's paint. That was very favorite of my yes. uh, teacher, Dr. Gharpure. And we still in an interdigital one. We get it done from there are two, three pharmacies which are left in Pune. They were about 20, about 20 years back. Now there are only two pharmacies which are left and they prepare and give it to us. It's a, it's a brownish or reddish color. Uh, dispensing product and works wonders in case the other treatment fails. That's the thing. Uh, Dr. Sable, the patient has taken the treatment for four weeks or so, but still there is a failure, say after six weeks. What could be the cause and how do you tackle that? Treatment failures. Can you uh, hear? See, uh, most of the cases they come with a treatment failure, they are of a clinical, clinical failure more than the resistance. If you have learned from the HIV, there is more clinical failure than the resistance. Yeah. And when there is a clinical failure, there are many causes. The drug factor is there, the patient factor is there, doctor factor is there, pharmacology. There are many factors there. But one of the common factors, what we have found in our clinical practice, patient has not been counseling properly. They have not been explained to the patient properly about the duration, how important is the adherence. 
so that is the most common cause we have found in our practice of course then if you are using itraconazole the instructions are different you are using terbinafaz instructions are different so i feel most of the dermatologists they are so much busy in their practice they do not give time to the patient explaining about the drug about the adherence that is that is the main cause in our practice so in my clinic any patient comes with pneumonia there is a separate doctor he sits in the separate room and the patient has been explained properly what is the importance of taking properly so the most common cause in our was the adherence and the compliance compared to other things all right dr ravi yeah dr saple i agree with you about the counseling part i mean which we the standard practice here in my clinic also but in addition to that just to give you an example last one week i had three patients who have used three weeks of itraconazole very religiously in 200 mg bid 200 mg bid i am telling you my god and still when they are using it new patches have appeared on normal looking skin fresh erythematous patches the patient has purchased he showed the proof of uh, the bill pharmacy bill it's of a standard manufactured brand he has used topicals he has used all hygienic measures he comes from an upper middle class family three such cases in the last week alone so there is something that's more than what meets the eye it's not compliance alone and it is yeah, in I agree, I agree. we should think of a second drug or it is in these cases we should think seriously about the species that is causing these are the cases where we need to either go for that malditoff test if it is available for us or a culture test if it is available for us that should throw more light on this so this is where we really need to in our future webinars this is where we need to really concentrate on the newer methods to tackle and investigate further what is happening to these cases or either a family member is there or this guy has changed clothes yeah that's right that's right he has exchanged clothes okay and then when the mic is there how can the fungus get a foothold on the skin so that next yeah. question uh dr parthavardhan i would like to add to this aha uh -huh. go ahead when you are using itraconazole itraconazole is a very potent drug very nice drug but it has got a lot of limitation one of the limitation is a bioavailability the bioavailability is not equivalent to the originators because that is a very important thing secondly is a dissolution it dissolves only in, in the fat is so dissolution is a very big problem the dissolution of any brand is not equivalent to the british or usa pharmaceuticals i am doubtful and the thirdly the capsule should be of hpmc capsule with uniform uniform palettes so uh, itraconazole when you are prescribing see that any brand which has followed this thing if you do not do this thing you give any expensive itraconazole it may not work that's why i said one of the factor is a drug factor so this is one of the factor away which you just see what over this uh, quality of the drug what time is hpmc capsule regular palate dissolution and bioavailability of that itraconazole what you are use it huh? all right uh, dr murli uh, can you elaborate more on this mild date of test i mean uh, uh, the, uh, when the do you do it test uh, the uh, it's actually a mass spectrophotometer uh, type of test which is assisted by a laser and it is done on a on a medium in which the fungus is already growing it is okay. not done on the clinical sample or on the patient okay so it takes approximately 2 weeks to get a report okay and you can also at the same time since you are going to anyway incubate the sample of the fungus on the sda you can also do the mic at the same time but the maltit of uh, ms is something which is going to give you a, a much more accurate uh, reading of what it is that the fungus is what is the species sometimes there may be mixed species so it helps to differentiate all this so that way maltit of is a pretty useful thing all right okay uh, dr ravi rathod how you manage the relapse of the patient let us let us be little practical yes. in this Yeah. Relapse, sir. As I would like to emphasize on the point what uh, Dr. Sapleer sir has told, 
see the counseling plays a very very important role i do agree on this like you take i reserve a lot of time in counseling rather than prescription and at the end of the day however much counseling you do the patients come back after some months of time That's and when i ask them question are you following all the guidelines what i have given like taking bath twice day patting the foot they say sir as long as we had the disease we had we treatment we were take doing this and once i recovered i stopped it that's what most of the people do okay so this has to be reemphasized so what i have started doing now is see this is the thing we have to follow maybe for your lifetime and if you don't do it if you come back to me with a relapse it is your responsibility and you you have to blame for it all right so that, okay infection okay. i can get it eradicated to avoid okay. relapse it is in your hand yeah. so i yeah. put the yeah. ball in their court so that i'll be safe yeah so yeah as okay. far as the relapse and recurrence is concerned uh, we don't have the facility to do what rajgopal sir has and all yeah, we don't, and we have, don't have culture and sensitivity sensitivity facility also so only thing i would like to just emphasize on the uh, itraconazole molecule so there are certain i would like not, not to name the brands but i have seen i have given a reasonably good molecule in a patient clinically suspected fungal infection and couldn't find any response and i was damn sure it's a fungal infection and i had to change a brand i could get the result okay so it's experience i right. not say okay. this can right. apply to everyone okay. so okay. i think that also plays a role and of course there's, there are so many factors as sir said if there is some chlorhydria or some gi disturbance or somebody is taking antacids and addition or uh, h2 blockers ranitid in protein uh, proton pump yeah. to interfere with the absorption and uh, sometimes in some patients i what i do is i ask them to take a tablet of vitamin c uh, okay. for taking itraconazole 15 to 20 minutes. how how does so, it help how does it help uh, just, just i read somewhere sir i don't recollect exactly in okay. somewhere it said coke i think um, Uh, in one of the textbook it is said the coke uh, once of coke uh, if they take along with the itraconazole the absorption is better so keeping those things in mind all right just trying it okay okay yeah murli uh, this thing is it's highly it's it's highly recommended to take itraconazole with half a glass of coke coke is basically mm-hmm. phosphoric acid so the effect of the antacids everything goes off the acidic environment helps in the absorption of itraconazole better that's number one i am not very sure about vitamin c so i don't want to go into that the, but i would just like to go back to the issue the, we originally mentioned that you know if the fungus is persisting for more than 6 weeks what do you do the factors could be either in the fungus either in the host uh, in the host or in the drug itself so uh we we have to be aware that uh, the fungus virulence is changing now and uh, since the fun- even if we don't know malditoff is not something which i would recommend everybody to have access to uh, even our own common sense can help us provided which is why when you look at the ectoderm guidelines we have not included malditoff as a method for treating fungal infections but then uh, even something like you using salicylic acid moisturizers all this helps to uh, in, uh, to to improve the host immunity and decrease the virulence of the fungus all right uh, sir i uh, i do agree with rajgopal sir uh-huh. uh, there are some uh, the basic uh, problem here is the acid mantle of the skin as dr ray was telling which is get, it gets damaged most of the time because of the use of excess use of steroids or other preparations and to bring back the acid mantle maybe the moisturizers and if the acid mantle is there the, the fungus is finds it difficult to invade the skin so it requires a alkaline medium so acid mantle of the skin has i think has the for which i do prescribe but a moisturizer which are likely to help in bringing this national moisturizing factors right right uh, no, let... no, one, one, one second dr patwardhan yeah. yeah tell yeah uh, dr rathod you yes, you sir. you mean we need the acidic media for the fungus to go down no sir acidic yeah, media is okay. it's a barrier no, no, no. Uh-huh. it's a barrier Pardon? acidic media is a barrier so uh-huh. not get into the acidic media it has a, the it has to be an oh, alpha does it go, it does it grow the, pro- the, the enzymes do convert this extracellular matrix into the mm. acid, um, basic media and that's how it survives 
That's right. That's right. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, no, it's other way. The fungus grows very well in alkaline media. Yes, no sir. Alkaline, alkaline media. It grows much in alkaline media. Yeah. In alkaline media. Acid mantle helps in the. This is one of the defense mechanisms which of the, of the body. Yeah, yes. yeah, but not the media because that's why when we prescribe, when we the patient come, one of the counseling we tell them not to use soap at least for first week. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, there are some issues which are not yet clear. We'll go to the next uh, uh, question. What are the? Let us consider some comorbidities. Uh, suppose Dr. Ravi, the patient has a hepatic or renal. He is compromised, and he is having some hepatic or a renal problem and some medications. How do you go ahead in managing the uh, fungal infection? I'll either go for terbifid or fluconazole. Okay. And the dose and how long? I mean the, the regular dose, regular dose. No, two fifty or five hundred of terbinafine. Two fifty terbinafine. Two fifty terbinafine. One tablet is enough. One tablet is enough. All right. Yes. And uh, uh, how long you should give? And I, I'll give uh, depending on the response. I give three to four weeks minimum. Okay, and then continue with that in case it. Uh, continue with that, really. and of course monitor the renal and hepatic parameters. Uh -huh. Certainly not use any drug that is likely to compromise on those those things. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, anyone else would like to add in this? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, in case of uh, hepatic uh, problems, I do avoid itraconazole as well as terbinafine both <laughs> because they get metabolized extensively in the hepatic system. So, uh, I would like to prefer fluconazole. Okay. I mean, he, he combined. Or else, depending the upon the renal clearance and other hepatic issues, so you can reduce the dose of the uh, itraconazole or terbinafine. All right. Okay. Uh, suppose the patient has a cardiac problem and he is on polypharmacy with uh, the medications. Uh, does the dose of or the choice of antifungal change? And what could be, Dr. Murli? I think it all depends upon the type of cardiac medication the patient is on. If he's mm -hmm. on any kind of anticoagulant or a coumarin or warfarin, then I would be very wary of giving a azole to the patient, whatever be That's the right. azole. That's Anything right. which is going to interfere with cytochrome P450, I would be wary of it. That's but right. uh, as you rightly said, many of the cardiac patients are on cocktails of drugs. That's right. So sometimes it is a bit bit difficult to uh, uh, to say what what is going to interact. But I think it would be a good safe thumb rule that just for a fungal infection, uh, uh, it is safer to avoid azoles if the patient has uh, a cocktail of drugs which is getting for a cardiac problem. Having said this, we should also be aware that azoles by themselves, especially a drug like fluconazole can prolong the QT interval of the heart. So even if the patient doesn't have uh, uh, something like, uh, uh, if the patient is being treated for an arrhythmia, not a heart block or something, there also it is important to uh, avoid an azole drug. All right, okay. Uh, 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 Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, here, I entirely agree when the patient they are on comorbidity, multiple drug, polypharmacy, we have to take two factors into account. One is the organ damage, and second is the drug-drug interaction. But as far because I'm studying fluconazole for last five years, and there are a lot of studies, so many people are under impression as all fluconazole and itraconazole are the same. But the metabolism of itraconazole is by CYP450, that is in the liver. Fluconazole is in the liver. There is very a minor that is it is uh, it is metabolized by substrate 2C9. So he doesn't have any interaction with the, any drugs, which is whether inducer or inhibitor of the CYP450. So there is hardly any drug drug interaction. Number two, as far as the Q2 interval, even I was worried initially. But there is a big study they have tried on 1,000 patients of HIV, fluconazole, IV, and then oral continuously for six months. They have kept the record of ECG, and they found 
there was no change in the QT interval in 1,000 patients in Africa. So we don't have to worry. I agree. As a as all, we have to be worried. But this is the study. So gluconosal is drug. You can give in all this comorbidity. There is hardly, in fact, terbinafine is a drug. We should not give if the patient is taking antipsychotic drugs. So where the gluconosal is safer. But fluconazole can be given very safe. I'm using for last five years, and we are using daily doses. Of course, it's not mentioned any. There is only one clinical trial by Dr. Uh, Singh from uh, Banaras Hindu University. He has used 150 uh, and 200 milligram for eight weeks, and found there are hardly any side effects. And he used in comorbidity also. All right, uh, Dr. Ravi, yeah, he wants to say something. One thing about itraconazole, there are reports of sudden cardiac uh, changes yeah. with itraconazole, yeah. and I do not use itraconazole in anybody who is about 60, 65 years. Okay. Itraconazole, I will not prescribe. I'll be very cautious with that. Okay. And of course, I fully agree with Saple. We have lots of experience with fluconazole, continued use, and it's a very, very safe drug for me. Uh, okay, what are the, what are the uh, studies which are published with fluconazole, Dr. Saple? You have extensive work with fluconazole. Yeah, so yeah. what are the uh, studies which have been published with use of antifungals, uh, especially fluconazole, in tinea yeah. uh, patients? Yeah, correct. See, fluconazole is not drug. It was not a drug of choice for any dermatophytosis. It was not recommended for any prescription, but people started using it once in a week, twice in a week. Probably they were trying something should work because that was a big problem. But when I started working, I said, first we know what is his pharmacodynamic, what is his pharmacokinetic, what is the drug drug interaction, what is his concentration. So a lot of studies done by Kabir Sardana, where, where he has made it very clear the concentration of fluconazole is 40 times more in statum corneum compared to itraconazole, terbinafine, and grisofolvine. Okay. Number two, bioavailability of uh, fluconazole is 99% yes. in statum corneum compared to uh, itraconazole or terbinafine. Thirdly, is a concentration, of course, the MIC is very high, but the MIC high is required because the dose of fluconazole is 150 milligram. If you give once in a week, twice in a week, you cannot achieve that MIC. Thirdly, it doesn't have any metabolism in the liver. So drug-drug interaction doesn't come in action. And fourthly, it's very convenient to take. You take before food, you take <clears> after <throat> food, you take during food, it doesn't make any difference. And all it's right. a cheaper, cheaper drug. There are so many advantages. All, right. and all okay. these studies have been published. Yes. Dr. Murli? I uh, have a small point to make. I beg to differ from what is being discussed now. Uh -huh. I do agree that the affinity for the fluconazole, cytochrome P450 enzymes is not so significant as heteroconazole. However, there is a warning on warfarin that if you take it along with fluconazole, there will be excessive bleeding. So we need to be aware of that. That's point number one. Point number two is that even a drug like phenytoin can interact yeah. with fluconazole. So let us not downplay fluconazole as a 100% safe drug. Third, what is important for us to know is that most of the studies of fluconazole have been done in patients who have yeast infections, candida, not candida, dermatophytes. Yes. Now, yeah. The yeast infections like candida, they are the ones where fluconazole is primarily the first drug of choice. That's right. Not in dermatophyte infections. That's right. All right. Okay. So we, we discussed about the drugs and the various comorbidities. Uh, Dr. Saple, uh, how does your prescription change if the patient is immunocompromised? Suppose he has a HIV. And does your prescription change in the immunocompromised patient or taking any immunocompressed uh, immunosuppressive drugs? Does it change yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. or it remains the same? Yeah, yeah. the first, I entirely agree with Murli. We need many more studies about the fluconazole. Uh, yeah, I entirely agree with him. Now, talking about the immunocompromise, when the patient is immunocompromised, all of us, we have to keep in mind, in immunocompromise, there will be hardly any cases of resistance. 
because there is no resistance from the host, the infection keep on spreading. So no need of raising any doses. They respond to our, our what we are giving is the conventional doses are enough. Only yeah. thing they need because the host immunity less, they need longer period of treatment. I remember one of the patient who was uh, two patient of mine who had rheumatoid arthritis, they were on prednisolone and methotrexate combination. I gave this itraconazole for three months. Whenever I used to give, they used to become all right. I follow that patient two years. When you give it, patient is to respond. When you stop it, after three weeks, she is to get, then I consulted those uh, rheumatologists. They said, sir, we cannot reduce the doses. We have to adjust. So, and the same question I asked Dr. Gupta, A.K. Gupta, Aditya Gupta from Canada, because he's supposed to have done maximum study on dermatophytosis. He said, Dr. Safle, I have not come across such patient. I have not treated in the patient with immunocompromise. But my, my experience, I have not seen any patient of tinea on immunocompromise getting cured. They come with a relapse and recurrence. That's, yeah. All right. Okay. Other panelists, I think you must ask them. All right. Uh, we will yeah. talk about some uh, drug reactions which you have seen. Dr. Ravi Rathod, what are the drug reactions of these antifungal drugs you have seen and how you have tackled them? I have not come across much of the uh, drug reactions so far, except okay. some articular rash. The okay. Hydroconazole. Okay. Epinephrine, although um, AGP is a uh, thing which uh, they say, but uh, I have not come across. One or two patients, of course, they had AGP. Okay. okay. Uh, what I have come across is, is that uh, the phototoxic reactions of uh, Griseofulvin. Ah, Griseofulvin, yes, sir. Yeah, Griseofulvin yeah. uh, is a phototoxic reaction. And one of my colleagues from Pune, she had two cases of uh, erythema multiformi and TEN with uh, itraconazole. Dr. Murli? What is your opinion? No, I and agree that these are all been reported, but I have been lucky. Yeah, you are, uh, uh, Dr. Ravi, yeah. what? One patient developed severe reeling sensation. That's okay. the only, th only thing. Severe reeling and I had to stop it on the very third or fourth day. All right. Uh, okay. that, that's the only thing I could find. Okay, okay. Dr. Sapley? Yeah, ed edema of the feet, you know, itraconazole. Initially, we were not knowing about much about the cardiac problem. The edema of feet is very common with itraconazole. All right. Okay. Uh, so, not much of the drug reactions. A couple of yeah. my colleagues from Pune have seen a lot of, but we will discuss it later. We face a lot of school children with tinea capitis. Uh, Dr. Ravi Rathod, what is your uh, treatment if you come across a child with tinea capitis? How do you go about it? A patient, say, he is in uh, 10 years of age and having tinea capitis. The griseofulvin is the drug of choice for me. Okay. I do give okay. Um, okay. Five, 10 milligram per kg body weight. Okay. That that uh, really helps in most of the patients. The so duration is around six weeks. Okay. Sometimes we can extend. And of course, uh, if the uh, child is from any hostel or anything, we would like to uh, ask the, uh, them also to be screened and they also be contact to be resected up. All right. I think uh, we will go for another 10 minutes or so. We will discuss some other issues like pregnancy and lactation. Uh, Dr. Murli, uh, what are the drugs which are to be used and not to be used in, say, first time of uh, pregnancy? Basically, all these antifungal drugs are category B. Yeah. So you would use it only if they're absolutely required and preferable right. to avoid it in the first trimester. Yeah. And uh, uh, one interesting thing about uh, the, the whole uh, issue of fungus is uh, during, uh, you know, pro actually progesterone, which is at high levels in a patient uh, who is pregnant uh, or in women, if you look at the epidemiology of uh, uh, dermatophytes, it's more common in men than in women because progesterone uh, actually uh, uh, helps to improve the immunity of the patient against a fungal infection. It uh, kind of protects the keratin. So the fungus is not able to invade. So when you look at it in that light, it is not such a big problem in pregnancy. Even a topical antifungal, which you are comfortable with, is good enough in most okay. cases. 
I have okay. never had to face a problem of treating uh, uh, pregnant women with antifungals successfully. All right. Okay. Now, okay. if the patient is lactating and you really feel that the patient needs an antifungal, there you can use fluconazole because fluconazole can be given even to very young children, but give it as a weekly dose. Okay. 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 Uh, how do we manage how anyone uh, goes for a concurrent or the sequential treatment? These have been discussed off late. Uh, Dr. Ravi Rathod? So no, sir, I have not tried any sequential treatment. Most of the patients, at least 99% of the patients have responded to a single drug most of the time. If the, the recurrence is less, so once, once they keep on with the recurrence two or three times, then if I had given atraconazole earlier, I would like to change on terbinafine with a okay. dose of instead of 250, I would like to give 500 to overcome the drug resistance, whatever exists. All right. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ravi, yeah. Uh, I did that out of frustration in uh, three or four <laughs> patients. Atraconazole with grisofluvin, I must confess. Uh -huh. Out of frustration. I mean, just there's no way out. Counseling, cleanliness, soap, shampoo. Okay. And regular dosing, everything over patients, bunch of prescriptions is swelling, swelling, but there's no respite from the tinea. I mean, it is whether the GI tract and absorption or the pH levels of his stomach or whatever uh, dynamics that are going on, I don't know. But this I had to do in three, four patients. And of course, there was improvement. All right. Okay. I don't uh, generalize this. Yeah. Uh, I will uh, ask. Doctor, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 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 I, uh, yeah. See, when you're talking of cyclic therapy, what is the purpose of cyclic therapy? Number one, to reduce the doses of toxicity, and number two, reduce the cost. These are the two main purposes of uh, uh, cyclic therapy. So here, do you think it is required here? We are not using for reducing the toxicity or we are not using for, so why to use cyclic therapy? How, how it is useful? Yeah. Uh, no, these are the therapies which have been mentioned that if you don't get the response, you need to change the medication. And if you, I mean, that's the reason or probably if you feel that the patient has developed a resistance, so you that, need to that, change That them. way, Kabir, Kabir, Kabir Sardana studies there, turbina fail, fails, you can use itraconazole. Itraconazole fail, you can use fluconazole. All right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, uh, we will go to the last question and then we'll take one or two questions which have been asked by the uh, those who are uh, listening to us. Uh, implications of antifungal therapy if the patient is COVID positive. Murli, now this would be... Uh, actually, it should not matter. Yeah. It really should not matter because, of, uh, of course, if you're going to be using and immunosuppressive to treat the COVID, then probably your duration of antifungal therapy will go up. But you know, the treatment for COVID will be maximum 10 days. Either the patient dies or survives after that. There is no long-term treatment for a COVID patient. So I don't think there is much of an implication because you can go ahead and give a patient antifungals even if he has got active COVID in the ICU. Oh. And if you're going to be using a drug like tocilizumab or if you're going to be using favipavir or if you're going to be using anakindra for severe COVID, you don't yeah. interact with antifungals. In fact, covering them with antifungals is a good idea. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll take a few questions uh, in the next five, ten minutes. Uh, the patient has taken itraconazole, applied uh, luliconazole, and he has uh, relapsed. Then the patient has been given terbinafine, he has been asked to use amlorphine, and he has relapsed. So what could be the treatment? Uh, we know Dr. Sapre is going to use fluconazole, but anything beyond that, we'd like to tell the patient. The way uh, you're we'll ask, no, I will ask you last, after, at the okay. end. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, so yes, Dr. Murli, and then so pending uh, Dr. Sapley's final verdict, there's one thing which I'd like to say is, <laughs> no, no, these, no, because all these doses that we are talking about are very empirical. Yes. And yes. Uh, we have not really looked at uh, weight-based dosing of antifungals for our patients. And that's one of the major reasons why probably uh, we are not so successful in treating our patients. 
So I think we are going to have to start looking at a weight-based dosing for all our patients. We have done that for griseofalbin, but not for the azoles or for fluconazole. Or I mean, fluconazole, if you look at the dosing, you have all sorts of crazy dosing regimens. Uh, itraconazole, some are using 100 BD, some are using 200 BD. I mean, we need a proper uh, uh, systematic weight-based dosing. That's the main thing I would actually like to bring in that our dosing today is empirical. All right. Okay. Sir, can, supply... I, can I? Work? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, sir, the, the, uh, uh, taking the cue from what Sir Rajgopal Sir has told, see, when uh, it is uh, required to give itraconazole in pediatric age group, we give 5 milligram per kg body weight. And uh, expecting that a patient weighing around 50 to 60 kg, 200 milligram per day is will suffice. But if what if a patient weighs around 100 kg, and we are still giving the same dose, so can you go by the per kg body weight calculation even in these patients in adults? That's right. Wanted to yeah, properly. yeah, Doctor Ravi. Already in my practice, for those who are weighing more than 70 kilograms, mm -hmm. I give fluconazole in a 400 milligrams tablet, because 400 milligrams we have been accustomed in using. A lot of HIV positive patients where cryptococcal uh, prophylaxis or cryptococcal maintenance treatment, we have been using it. So I'm pretty well sure of the safety of the drug. Therefore, I'm opting for fluconazole 400 milligrams. And I must say that I'm getting very good results with that. So perhaps uh, it, there lies the answer for what Dr. Murali is saying now. Now, about the case, what you have mentioned about a patient using various topicals, various orals sequentially and not getting any response. I think this is, these are the cases where counseling is of utmost importance, gene pants are of utmost importance, soap and shampoo are of utmost importance, and group treatment in the family is of utmost importance. Okay. And we should really get into the uh, nitty gritty of it, whether the patient has continuously used these drugs or were there breaks of one week, 10 days, 10 days on, 10 days off. Then of course, patient has used several times, but never in a sequence for four weeks continuously which is required to control the fungus. All right. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Sapley? I just wanted to know about itraconazole yeah. dosings. Yeah. yeah. That's weighing more. Uh -huh. See, uh, Dr. Patwardhan, uh -huh. uh, when you are uh -huh. using itraconazole, the first you have to see that, as I mentioned, the quality of drug, bioavailability, dissolution, HPMC capsules, and the regular palate, or you have to see that brand is having that or not. That is number one. Number two, when you're using itraconazole, itraconazole first 21 days, the dose has to be BID. It can be even 200 milligram, it has to be BID because it takes about 14 days to 21 days to reach what is called pharmacological study state. So initially, the doses are even higher, there has to be BID. So I do not know about this case, but you know, I said that we did a, a clinical observation study with itraconazole with a good adherence counseling. We did not get any patient who had any relapse. We followed for I then we say, when the itraconazole is working, why not to try other drugs? We tried terginophilin with a good adherence counsel. It worked. We tried grisofolvin. It worked. So, you know, uh, our experience, people are taking adherence and counseling easy from HIV or learn. In last about 30 years, adherence and counseling is a very critical problem. All right. You okay. Keep on doing the counseling. Ask the doctor to do counseling and see that patient had taken regular and the good quality of itraconazole definitely it will work. But you switch on to fluconazole it will definitely work. Okay. Now, friends, uh, there are five, six questions. I will ask only one person because yeah. we will be, re we don't want to repeat and delay the thing. Dr. Yeah. Murli, clinically, it looks like fungus. I do scraping and KOH turns negative. I mean, uh, I, I wonder why I did this KOH. So how do we go when we show the report as KOH negative, but still I feel clinically it is uh, tinea. So how do you uh, counsel the patient and how do you go about it? If I if I'm clinically convinced that it is fungus, yes. even if it's KOH negative, I would treat as a fungus. Fungus, that's right. So, so it's very difficult to find a fungus which. Yeah. Mimics. Yeah. 
That's right. We have discussed about uh, the uh, patient uh, do not respond to the various lines of treatment. Then what treatment we should give? Dr. Mukesh from uh, Modesa has asked this. Then what can be done if the diabetic get cured even after treatment for six months? And, uh, and what can be done if diabetics don't get cured even after six months of treatment? Dr. Ravi Rathod, if, if, say, yes, presume it is a controlled diabetes. Controlled diabetes with uh, fungal infection. Yes, yes, yes. So the diabetics are slightly more prone to they have the infection, chronic infection, and more uh, with the tinea pedis uh, rather than any other dermatophytic infection. The line of management remains same uh, as we do it in uh, other non-diabetic individuals. Only thing is we have to ask them to take care of their personal hygiene very regularly. And uh, the uh, drug interaction is another issue because they may be on so many other anti-diabetic and other drugs. So that has to be kept in mind and accordingly that care has to be taken when we choose that particular anti -fungal. Yeah, someone has asked about toxic epidermal necrolysis. I did mention that in my Puna colleague, Dr. Dhanachri Bede has seen two cases and she has successfully tackled it with uh, the medications, but they were all uh, itraconazole induced. Uh, uh, is there any role of steroids in management of uh, fungal infection? Murli told in the beginning, but the, we would like to repeat it again because that's the yeah, question. I would just like to say that uh, tinea could be highly inflammatory. And in the late 90s, people were using steroids, but they were not using the super potent steroids, but they were using it only for five to seven days, not more than that. And once the inflammation settles down, they were being started on antifungals. It was not being combined. If you combine a steroid with an antifungal, the fungus will develop antifungal drug resistance because alpha demethylase will get inhibited by the steroid. That's number one. Number two is that another role where a steroid may be required is when there is a dermatophytite. When there is a dermatophytite, sometimes you'll see patients with both their hands. It looks like a terrible type of pomphalates, but if you examine carefully, you might find that between the toes, they will have a very florid uh, tinea interdigitalis. So dermatophytates also, there is a role for a short course of steroids, followed by a good course of systemic antifungals. All right. Okay. I think Dr. Patwardhan here, I would like to add something. Please. Yeah. No, because many people are under impression when you apply steroid, it will go into resistance, but it's other way. When you apply steroid, the local resistance goes down. When the resistance goes down, any organism, they cannot become resistance. Like in 96, we did a study of non-HIV in HIV, the tuberculosis. And for, you know, for your surprise, we have presented in 96 in international meeting, the uh, MDR-TB is common in non-HIV not in HIV. So any patient is immunocompromised, any organism, it can be tinea, it can be TB, they are less likely to become resistance because there are no resistance from the body. So because this is I'm fighting for last five years, many people they are saying you apply steroid, it becomes resistant. No, it becomes extensive. It becomes very conspicuous because the fungi can grow very easily. That's right. And, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That's the, I, I thought I'll add to this. Yes, yes. Uh, the last question which has come is, do we stop uh, itraconazole if we see pedal edema? Anyone can take or uh, we can continue? No, we, we, can. We, we, we should stop it. We should stop it. Okay. I mean, we agree to this. We have to stop uh, if we see pedal edema which has come after uh, starting uh, uh, itraconazole. Yes. Dr. Murli? Yeah, I would, if it's rare, but yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. So practically, we have covered all the questions. We have a few questions which came. We had already discussed this. Then I will just give you half a minute to everyone to just summarize whatever you want to tell, which probably was not discussed. Dr. Ravi, we start with Dr. Ravi. Yeah, probably I would, I am more comfortable doing the practice the way I am. I'm more comfortable with identifying the species. But I would also like our colleagues to stress on antibiotic abuse along with steroid abuse. Yes. I have a strong feeling that the normal flora and fauna in our Indian uh, constitution has changed on the bodies. That is what is facilitating this fungal, a plethora of fungal infections, what we are seeing. So 
if we do a systematic study of what constitutes the so called normal coat and uncoat normal flora of the skin from axilla from the mucous membrane from all of the different six sites or eight sites of the body from across the country then we are likely to find a difference between what it is elsewhere and what it is here then we can that can be a starting point to change the body dynamics rather than only thinking of pharmacotherapy will be changing the body's interaction with the fungus that's my take home message from this. yeah that's right dr ravi rathod <laughs> yes sir the, the, see sir, there are multiple factors involved in the pathogenesis and the drug resistance so uh, we have to think more scientifically as uh, dr ravi said acid mantle of the skin has to be taken care of that's very important and we have to look into the why the patient is waiting for the regimen most of the time it is because of the uh, uh, interference with its absorption or because of the drug uh, the efflux mechanism or whatever it is so unless we uh, come out with some mechanism where we can address all these things scientifically i think this problem is going to remain for a long period to yeah that's right dr saple mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh, talking of the take home message the first message more people were talking about resistance resistance but we realize most of the cases is a, they are clinical failure more than the resistance that that is number one number two we were talking of the drugs are not working then we tried itraconazole work terbinafin work grisoxolin work fluconazole work but what is important counseling duration 6 to 8 weeks and adherence that is uh, very important and lastly all topical agent use any myconazole clotrimazole they are useful only this newer like laliconazole sertraconazole according to that one of the uh, study they are better than but according to us any local ointment they are useful all right dr murli uh, difficult to give a last statement after all the learned <laughs> <laughs> speakers have given this um but i i think uh, i won't repeat what's been said uh, the what i would like to say is that uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, drug failures with uh, patients who are using laliconazole laliconazole is being used right left and forward by everybody and uh, it's not being used properly we are seeing a lot of failures to laliconazole number 1 so there is ha there has to be a chase for a better drug number 2 don't go for drugs like uh, uh, voriconazole or posoconazole i have seen prescriptions by dermatologists for voriconazole in uh, so called resistant kenia i think we should reserve that only for systemic use of yes, uh, yeast based infections it is dangerous to introduce that and produce drug resistance to voriconazole and i would like that if at all we have another webinar on this which will be hopefully conducted by dr patwardhan with his aplomb and style and finesse <laughs> um, we will discuss the genomic variations yeah. that are occurring yeah. in the, the genomic variations that are occurring in the fungi are the reason why drug resistance is happening yeah. and uh, even when you are using a steroid or some other drug the uh, the mammalian host is not able to recognize the fungal genome and the fungus keeps multiplying okay. Okay. so i think you know these are areas which we need to go into more in detail and see yeah. how it is going to impact our practice definitely definitely uh, as a practicing doctor what i tell the patient that they go take buy the medicines and discuss from where you have taken the treatment i tell them tell your friends tell your family members never 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 to buy the medicine from chemists because chemists are the one which give all this triple combination which has clobetasol so i and i have two three pictures of extensive tinea incognito on my desktop i show them to all the patient that in case you don't follow this you are going to land up with this type of problem it is more of a more of a threat to the patient that if you don't follow this you will get this and they abide to whatever we say this is all the so probably some practical tips which i i would like to share it with my friends uh, okay. friends uh, i am really thankful to all of you i am thankful to dr murlidhar rajgopalan dr v ravi ravi rathod and my sincere sincere thanks to my friend dr saple for asking me to moderate this session and 
really thankful to doctor uh, to the uh, uh, to fdc for giving this chance and uh, conducting this seminar on uh, sunday evening so this is a weekend now enjoy now good amount of webinars have a good day enjoy and see you sometimes sometimes in the other webinars bye bye thank you so much thank you keep safe stay home <laughs> stay home stay safe enjoy your life That's the, the, i would like to thank all of you it was a wonderful wonderful session and uh, i have got more than 250 questions which obviously we cannot uh, discuss all of it and some are very repetitive yeah but, i uh, mean we, i took the questions because most yes, of sir. them were discussed in our discussion yes sir yes sir uh, and uh, uh, sir uh, 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 just to share the success uh, uh, we have more than 9800 doctors attended this oh, program oh my god and a very uh, very uh, <laughs> but, but many of is, them have written really attended that includes uh, the social the best, media uh, that includes yes, the social media <laughs> no no social media because it says 13 here but uh, no, sir this is this is the platform only for us okay okay this okay. is the platform only for uh, okay. uh, us uh, we okay, have okay. A, a different link for the okay. audience okay, okay and in that uh, i'll share the picture also sir no no it's okay uh, we, have just... than, <laughs> we have more than we have more than 9800 9800 doctors uh, maybe some may be repetitive because every time they log in it, it, is, it is counted as one Okay, but okay. Uh, uh, nonetheless, it is more than seven thousand doctors who have attended, and many have said that it is the one of the best program that they have heard on antifungal till date. All right, okay. So it okay. is. It was a wonderful, wonderful program, and thanks uh, Thank all of you from the bottom of my heart, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you for Thank association you. Okay. with FDC, okay. sir. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay. So, Taylor, don't stop it. Ah, uh, don't stop it. Uh -huh. uh, first, I must thank uh, Dr. Patwardhan and all our friend Dr. Murli. Dr. Ravi, uh, both Ravi's sharing, and I was told a lot of things. Thank you very much. It was very nice. It was without any bias. It was one of the nice discussions. So thank you again. Okay, stay fit, do exercise, enjoy your life, and have a good day and good week ahead. Thank you. Thank bye you, bye. thank you, and uh, I did come. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay. thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Prashant, now you can stop the live. Uh... Yeah.